All right, next up, we're looking at the equalizer section on the fat channel. Um, you see we have four sections, we got this equalizer section highlighted here. We got four sections within that, low, low mid, high mid, and high. Now if you've got the 24 channel mixer, it's gonna look slightly different than uh, this board. You're gonna see an extra section in each of these. Instead of two knobs in each section, you're gonna see three. And that third knob's gonna say Q. Um, I'll touch on that briefly. Essentially what that does is widens the amount of frequencies you're affecting or narrows it to a smaller amount of frequencies that you're affecting, um, whatever frequency you've selected. So uh, just taking a look here, on each section we've got frequency and we've got gain. Um, frequency and gain. So in each section, the first thing will start out at low you can turn on or off each section. If you're adjusting your EQ and notice you aren't hearing any changes being made, you might not have your EQ on in that section. So if you want each of those sections to be making a change, have them on, but if you don't need to, if you're not changing anything with that frequency range, just turn that, turn that EQ section off. Um, we'll start at the low. We've got the frequency side. What you're doing on this knob is adjusting what frequency you're going to affect. So what frequency do you want to cut or boost um, when you're EQing? So we start at, at the bottom we got 36 hertz, the top we got 465 hertz. Now uh, I've got a cheat sheet guide for those of you that um, haven't mixed a lot or uh, need a refresher on uh, what frequencies you need to adjust when you hear certain things. Now for example with a with, uh, the low frequency EQ, a common thing that I do um, would be if something's boomy, say uh, say an instrument has a boomy sound to it, it's typically going to be around 130 hertz. So if I want to get rid of a boomy sound, I'm going to select 130 hertz. And then over here is the gain. If it's on the zero here, it's not being cut or boost. That frequency is being unaffected. If I go up above that, I'm boosting. 100, the frequency is around 130 hertz. If I go down, I'm cutting the frequencies around 130 hertz. Um, and like I said, on 24 channel mixer, we've got that Q knob. If we turn the Q up, it's affecting more of the frequencies around 130 hertz. So it may be affecting 108, 90, 55, and 85. It may be affecting that whole range if the Q is up. If the uh, Q is down, um, or maybe, maybe I'm thinking backwards on that. You'll see a, a triangle with a slope high, um, skinnier or, or uh, wider. Um, if you go to the wider section, affecting more frequencies around that selected channel. If you go to this up towards the skinny section, you're affecting less the frequencies around the channel and you're just affecting um, that frequency. So, and you do that in each section. Um, we select the frequency we want to affect, and then we either boost that frequency or we cut that frequency each one just like that. On the 16 channel we've got this high Q button because we don't have the knobs like you guys in the 24 channel mixer have. Um, on the high mid and low mid. On the high and low frequency we've got an extra net button that says shelf. What that does is makes it so whatever frequency we select, say I select 5 kilohertz for the high frequency and I turn that up it's going to boost all of the frequencies above 5 kilohertz. So we see here 6, 7, 8, all the way up to 18 kilohertz. All of those frequencies are going to be boosted by that amount if the shelf button's on. If the shelf button's off, it's just going to boost the frequencies around 5 kilohertz. If it's on, all of them above, all of them above the frequency you select are going to be boosted or cut. On the low, it's the same thing except in reverse. If you turn the shelf on, all the frequencies below, whatever frequency you select, are going to be boosted or cut. That's the basics of setting EQs, learning how to EQ properly. Um, take a lifetime, this only took a few minutes, but um, you'll spend the rest of your life learning how to listen to instruments and voices and properly EQing them. Like I said, check out the sheet, cheat sheet I've got and uh, that should help you out quite a bit in getting started. But once again, have no fear, um, good place to start out.
is loading presets and you'll see EQ settings and compressor settings and gates and all that pop up for you preloaded um, and give you a really good place to start from. Just a couple more things on the fat channel we need to look at quickly. Over in this section we've got a pan knob. You can pan right to left. Panning means uh, uh, moving the sound more to the right speaker or more to the left speaker if you've got a stereo setup. Now in most church situations I would recommend not panning. Now the reason for this is if you've got people sitting right next to in the front, right next to the right speaker, and people on the right in the front sitting next to the left speaker, if you pan an instrument it may sound good back where you're standing, having a nice stereo spread, but um, the person who's standing next to the right speaker is going to hear a lot more of whoever you pan to the right, and the person standing next to the left speaker isn't going to be able to hear that person as well. So typically I'm not going to pan in a church situation or concert situation where people are up close to the speakers. Um, the other thing we've got next over here is the stereo link button. You'll see that I have two channels on my mixer that are linked stereo and when I hit the mute here, you'll see it turns off and on the mute on both channels. When I select it selects both channels and the EQ and all the settings for those channels are the same for both channels and it pans both things to the right and the left since they're stereo pair. So what this I have set is inputs coming in from a uh, CD player and so they just pan to the right and left automatically and they're grouped together. Now so you can see what I have over here is a stereo button link is selected. If I turn this off, if I hit the stereo link button, those channels are not going to be linked. So um, you can choose to link channels or unlink channels. Just know that it's going to be always in groups of two um, in order. You can link one and two, but you can't link two and three. So you can link one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. Um, and that's how you link input channels. You can also link aux output channels. So I've got aux 1 and aux 2 linked because I have a stereo mix going out for in-ear monitors. I got stereo left and stereo right. And so when I selected when I selected aux 1, the way I set this up is I select aux 1 and hit the stereo link button and it linked it to 2. We'll talk about aux mixing um, more in a little bit. But that's what the stereo link button does. Now the next thing here that is important is the assign section. This is the section that tells the mixer where you want that channel sound to go. So if we select channel 8 here, you can see it is not assigned to anything. So this sound is going to go nowhere um, out of that channel. If we hit the main button and assign it to the main, the sound from channel 8, when we turn Channel, channel 8 up and down, that signal is coming over and going out of the main channel out to the speakers. Okay, If we assign it to subgroup 1, that sound's coming out of that channel, turn it up and down there, and if that main's not on, that sound is just coming to this channel strip that says subgroup 1. Now where it goes from subgroup 1, <laughs> you select subgroup 1, and I'm going to tell that to go to the main, if I wanted that to go to the main output. Um, so each, each, uh, each of the subgroups, you can choose to send it to the main, or you can choose there are subgroup outputs on the back of the mixer, so if you wanted to create um, a separate mix um, for that subgroup, you can do that. But one thing that's really helpful to use subgroups for, what subgroups are often used for, is mixing drums. So say you have multiple mics on a drum set. Say my drum set is, is a 13, 14, and 15. Um, once I get all of the drum mics, the drum set, is balanced. So say I've got kick and tom and snare and then overhead mics for my cymbals and I've got them all set where I want them. 
when I want to turn up my drums up and down, I don't want to have to evenly make sure I'm moving all of these at the same time. So rather than sending each of those channels directly to the main output, instead I'm going to select each of those channels and make sure it's not going to the main. I'm going to make, select each of those channels and send it to a subgroup. I'm selecting subgroup 1. Um, so I've got each of those sent to subgroup 1 and then over here on subgroup 1 I'm going to select that, I'm going to tell that to go to the main. So now, since I've got all these drums evenly mixed the way I want them, they sound the way I want, all of them, instead of going directly out to the speaker, are going to subgroup 1, and then subgroup 1 is going out to the speaker. So now when I want to change the volume of that whole drum set, I can just turn up and down subgroup 1, and it's like I'm turning up and down all these faders all together the same amount at once. So now I can adjust the whole drum set without having to come over and adjust each of the drum mics individually.